A lot of folks love cats because they seem so self-sufficient. But in the age of humans, that's not a prerequisite for success. For the next replacement, we'll move heaven and earth, even in places it could never survive on its own. Because of abundant sunshine, golfers have access to scores of courses year-round. Here in Palm Springs, to walk the walk, you gotta dress the part. Up there. Perfect. Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. You got it. I did not. All right. Nope. It's still there. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Boom. I, I was feeling real good about myself until just now. <laughs> Turf grass. It covers more of the U.S. than almost any other plant. And there's nowhere grass is more pampered than the golf courses of Palm Springs, California. Good golf requires good grass, in your opinion? I would think so, yes. OK. Yeah. And good grass requires you? Well, I'd like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> Jonas takes care of some of the world's most prestigious golf courses. And it's not just a profession. I'm in my element. It's everything that the to the it's a love affair. Then break on my back to make it out. Got me feeling like I look at parks, football stadiums, soccer fields, and golf courses. I love it all. Oh, yeah. According to Jonas, this whole golf thing started with a bunch of Scots drinking whiskey and whacking balls with sticks. Some of those Scots immigrated to the US and brought the game with them, along with its emerald green landscape. Oh, <laughs> dang, that thing's out there. Tiger, here I come. You've literally created an oasis. There's not a whole lot of people that can say that. Yeah. Turns out grass isn't just grass. You got your Bermudas, your fescues, your rye, and each species plays a different role. A good Bermuda grass is gonna be your base for probably most of the golf courses here in the valley, just because the temperatures in the summer get so warm. And that's the only grass that really will be able to thrive and survive through that. It's a good, hard-working, sturdy. It's, it's solid. But these turf grasses are just a tiny subset of the 12,000 species of grass that grow on every continent, many of which are disappearing thanks to us. OK. All right, let's see it. Let's take her back. Bingo. Oh, that was heartbreaking. Oh, a little piece of my soul died just now. Humans go to ridiculous lengths to make turf happy. We have a set of mowers that will mow down to eight hundredths of an inch. We have large mowers. We have a greens roller to firm up the surface and make it faster. A little bit, little more, right there. Okay. Uh, not that much, right there. Yeah. Okay. Back and straight through. Bingo. Yeah. Hello. You're going nice. pro. I mean, if you're just measuring success and impact, if grass was playing golf, it definitely got the hole in one. <laughs> Underneath this thin veneer of green lies a massive engineered life support system. And without it, this desert oasis would turn to dust. What you're looking at right here is essentially what we call our war room. 400 acres, several thousand sprinkler heads on, on two golf courses. Wow. So it's pretty massive. Like, How do you decide what gets watered when? So up here, 358,000 gallons of water run last night. So this is putting out a a lot of like 300,000 some odd gallons of yes. water yep. every single day. Yep, if on this course. Okay. Then you have this golf course, which would be very similar to it. Where is all of this water coming from? Because we're basically in the middle of a desert. Right, absolutely, yeah. Here on this property, we're fortunate to be a part of the Mid Valley Pipeline, which is where they connect water to the Colorado River. So it comes 
you know, from a long way away. To keep these courses green, millions of gallons of water travel hundreds of miles to be sprayed out of thousands of sprinklers. If that sounds like a lot, that's because it is. But golf courses are just the beginning. There are more than 40 million acres of turf in the U.S. Each year, they consume 80 million pounds of fertilizer and trillions of gallons of water, while legions of people and machines keep them manicured and green. It's the most resource-intensive plant in the country. Yet, the vast majority of it grows not on a farm, but in neat squares around our homes. Little patches of paradise, perfect for a drink with a friend. This is Mark Norman. He's an urban planner. For Mark, building a great city or neighborhood is kind of like making a great cocktail. You need to know all the ingredients and predict how they'll interact once mixed together. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that was a tasty beverage. As a biologist, it's kind of weird to me, right? It's like wherever you go, in whatever environment, humans settle down and then there's grass. <laughs> yeah. Every place that we inhabit is artificial in some way. Although this is a pretty nice situation. It, 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 I'm not gonna lie, this is some good living. <laughs> I'm gonna blame the Brits. Okay. Um, because- I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. This notion of the sort of manner of the estate Oh, hello. You mix that with the kind of individualism of the U.S. and you have now people with quarter acre lots, that's their castle, mm -hmm. surrounded by this space. So it's, it's status is, is, is what you're saying. It, it signals that I own this territory mm -hmm. and also that I maintain it. Mm -hmm. I think baked into the way we expanded as a country, right, we had too much land. People needed to populate that. Like manifest destiny. Manifest destiny, okay. exactly. If you farmed it or ranched it or timbered it for five years, then that land was yours, okay. right? I mean, if you were white and male. Yeah, of course. Um, but that sets a precedent, right? Like that you can't just sit on land, you have to prove that you're cultivating it. But grass isn't just baked into American psychology. It forms the economic foundation of American homeownership. Let's say you're driving around a neighborhood in suburban Boston or Tulsa or Northern California. They look relatively similar, and that's because these standards had to be met in order for those home buyers to get a 30-year mortgage. They had covenants saying you had to have grass and you had to cut it once a week. Wow, okay. <laughs> that is very specific. Right, and we have homeowners associations that enforce that. Yeah, like legally enforce that. Legally enforce that. Okay. Are the same rules applied to the back, like you have to like mow your backyard the same way? You know, the regulations might not go to the back of the house. It's like the suburban mullet. It's like business in the front and party in the back kind <laughs> exactly. of thing going on. Okay. <laughs> Driving around Palm Springs, you can see just how deeply grass is rooted in the American psyche. I love the Christmas decorations. Yeah. That's such a Christmas atmosphere we got going on here. Yes. Just when you think about this desert landscape and the amount of lawn we're passing by now, it's, it's a, a lot, lot of, of grass. Damn grass. Yeah. In a country where we talk about productivity, it's so unproductive mm. is, is, I think, the irony of it yeah. all. Grass is a signal. Just having it tells the world and ourselves that we're part of the community. People think this is freedom of choice, uh -huh. but if they ever wanted to make different choices, they're forbidden to. It takes a whole slew of federal, state, regulatory frameworks to make this happen. No matter what was there before, we dig it up, chop it down, irrigate, fertilize, and replace it with, you guessed it, grass. I Honestly, I can't even tell if that's real grass or not. 
I think it's real grass. That's incredibly uniform. <laughs> But what's interesting is that so we many can be damn you. cul-de-sac. They literally everything is a cul-de-sac. <laughs> everything is a cul-de-sac. <laughs> Everywhere we go, humans reshape the landscape not just to suit our needs, but to match our ideas of what we want it to be. And grass is an idea that's so powerful it compelled us to transform a desert into a lawn. <laughs> 